Welcome to our show, Hong Kong Brief. Today, we've got some fascinating stories lined up for you. First up, we'll dive into how interior designer Emma McLean transformed a cramped Hong Kong apartment into a spacious, family-friendly haven with a touch of English modernism. It's a makeover you won't want to miss. Next, we'll explore the innovative community living rooms popping up around Hong Kong. These spaces are providing much-needed relief and social interaction for residents of subdivided flats, and we'll look at how they might be expanded in the future. Finally, we'll shift gears to the world of sports, where Hong Kong cyclist CC Lee is gearing up for the challenge of her life at the Olympic Velodrome. With her coach urging her to take an offensive approach, it promises to be an exciting event. Please stay tuned for the detailed stories. South China Morning Post, Hugo Bus Bridge and Michelle Ng's Clear Water Bay apartment in Hong Kong has been transformed into a serene, English-inspired haven by interior designer Emma McLean and her associate Tasneem Taibkin. The British couple, who have been living in Hong Kong for over a decade, aim to create a family-oriented space that combines practicality with elegance. McLean's design concept draws from the tranquil aesthetics of an English country house, featuring soft tones, grainy timber, and floral wall coverings. The apartment's layout was completely reconfigured to maximize space, with innovative solutions like interlocking storage systems and bookshelves that double as doors. The kitchen dining area serves as the heart of the home, fostering family bonding activities. The main bedroom exudes tranquility, with a hydraulic bed for storage and versatile wooden cubes. Their daughter's room is designed to evolve with her, featuring mostly loose furniture. McLean's meticulous attention to detail and understanding of the family's needs have resulted in a home that balances form and function beautifully. South China Morning Post, the introduction of community living rooms in Hong Kong aims to improve the quality of life for tenants of subdivided flats. In Yuk Fung, who lives in a 100-square-foot flat with her family, has experienced significant positive changes since the opening of a 3,000-square-foot community living room run by NGO Caritas Hong Kong. This space offers amenities like a communal kitchen, laundry area, and air-conditioned sitting areas, all free of charge. Ng has formed friendships and her son's social skills have improved through interactions with other children. The government has allocated 100 million Hong Kong dollars to support similar projects, providing spaces for tenants to cook, relax, and socialize. The first government-led community living room in Sham Shui Pa quickly became popular, especially for its kitchen and shower facilities. Social workers like Kenneth Payne from Caritas have been instrumental in bringing these projects to fruition, overcoming challenges like finding suitable venues and securing funding. The community living rooms not only meet daily needs but also serve as social hubs, helping tenants like Kimmy Chen, who started a small business making snacks, realize their potential. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong cyclist CC Li Zi Wing is preparing for the challenge of her life at the Paris Olympics Velodrome, guided by head coach Hervé de Gorn. After placing 64th in the women's road race, Li is set to compete in her favored Omnium event. De Gorn emphasizes that the goal is not just to gain experience but to perform, aiming for a top half finish in the 22 woman field. Lee's training has included a mix of European road racing and focus sessions at a velodrome in Roubaix, France. Despite initial challenges, such as stress and feeding zone errors during the road race, de Gorn believes Lee has the potential to excel if she maintains an offensive mindset. The Hong Kong cycling team has been adapting to a new training regime under de Gorn, who has introduced more European races to their schedule. Lee's preparation for the Omnium event includes overcoming the mental and physical demands of high-level competition, with the support of her coach and a new endurance coach to be appointed after the Olympics. South China Morning Post, Singapore-based jewelry designer Lauren Koo has spent the last decade revolutionizing the jewelry industry with her unique blend of elegance and playfulness. 
Known initially for her semi-precious gummy bear pendants, Ku has recently shifted her focus towards nature-inspired designs, creating pieces that are meant to evolve with their wearers. Her new brand, LXK Fine Jewelry, captures the whimsical side of her creativity, featuring materials like jadeite and wood. Meanwhile, her Lorenx Gu line showcases her dedication to fine jewelry with intricate craftsmanship. Ku's designs are distinguished by their attention to detail and movement, ensuring that each piece is not just an accessory but a work of art. Her floral and fruit-inspired collections, such as artichoke studs and spiky GAC studs covered in champagne diamonds, emphasize her commitment to creating jewelry with personality. Ku's dedication to customization and her close relationship with her craftsmen in Hong Kong highlight her belief in maintaining a personal connection with her clients, ensuring that each piece is both meaningful and unique. South China Morning Post, the mental health struggles of Gen Z, particularly related to eating disorders, are highlighted through the personal stories of Hong Kong women like Natalie Chung and Minnie Wong. Chung, who began dieting obsessively in high school to emulate Instagram models, realized she had anorexia nervosa despite never being formally diagnosed. Wong, who alternated between regular and crash diets, developed binge eating habits and faced significant mental and physical health challenges. Experts like Dr. Paul Kong and Dr. Gabrielle Tusher emphasize that eating disorders are complex and often tied to deeper psychological issues, such as low self-worth and trauma. Social media's impact on body image and societal pressures contribute significantly to these disorders. Despite the stigma and lack of specialized treatment in Hong Kong, both women have found ways to manage their conditions. Wong now shares her journey and positive messages with her followers, while Chung, a registered dietitian, advocates for a balanced and intuitive approach to eating. Both stress the importance of seeking help and support from loved ones and professionals. South China Morning Post, Hilary Swank recently celebrated her 50th birthday with a bucket list experience of swimming with whales, marking another milestone in a year filled with firsts, including the first birthday of her twins, Aya and Ong, with her husband, Philip Schneider. Schneider, a social venture entrepreneur, shares Swank's passion for social impact and environmental issues, which likely contributed to their strong bond. The couple met on a blind date set up by friends and quickly grew close, leading to their engagement and subsequent wedding in a magical ceremony surrounded by ancient redwood trees in Carmel, California. Their love for nature is evident in their off-grid adventures, such as a recent trip to Alaska for Schneider's 50th birthday. The names of their twins reflect meaningful connections and universal themes, with Aya named after a courageous Syrian refugee and Om after the universal sound that unites all people. Swank's journey with Schneider showcases a life filled with love, adventure, and a deep commitment to making a positive impact on the world. CBC Vancouver police have reported that scammers have swindled nearly $6 million from the city's Chinese-Canadian community since the start of the year. The Vancouver Police Department, VPD, is investigating 26 cases, though they believe the actual number of victims is higher. Dixon Ng from Vancouver's Chinese Community Policing Center noted the severe emotional trauma victims face, often losing their life savings. The scams include impersonating Chinese police officers, blessing scams exploiting spiritual beliefs, and fraudulent job offers leading to romance or investment scams. Constable Tanya Vicentine urged the community to spread awareness, while Queenie Chu from the Immigrant Services Agency SUCCSS emphasized the vulnerability of seniors and newcomers due to cultural and language barriers. SCMP Opinion, the annual World Breastfeeding Week in August highlights the need for better policies and facilities for breastfeeding mothers in Hong Kong. A recent survey revealed that over 80% of mothers struggle with inadequate public breastfeeding facilities, with many facing long waits and poor conditions. The Equal Opportunities Commission has flagged the issue, but more needs to be done by both the government and society to support breastfeeding mothers.
Despite legal protections against discrimination, many mothers still face harassment and discouragement, particularly in public and workplace settings. Enhancing support for breastfeeding is crucial for improving birth rates and child-rearing practices. SCMP Opinion Despite Hong Kong's reputation as a caring society, recent family tragedies reveal gaps in social services, particularly for caregivers. A tragic case involved a 60-year-old man and his bedridden 82-year-old mother, who were found dead in their home after the man died in an accident, leaving his mother without care. Similar incidents have highlighted the need for more proactive measures to support high-risk families. Authorities are urged to implement targeted outreach and emergency care support to prevent such tragedies. The recurring nature of these incidents underscores the inadequacies in the current system and the urgent need for better support for the elderly and their caregivers. South China Morning Post when Hannah Nealman, the influencer behind Ballerina Farm, completed her interview with the Times of London, she believed it had gone well. However, the published article shocked her and her followers by portraying her as oppressed and her husband as the culprit. This sparked an online debate about her happiness and marital dynamics. Born in Utah to flower shop owners, Hannah was the eighth of nine children and fell in love with ballet eventually attending Juilliard School. Her life took a turn when she met Daniel Nealman, son of JetBlue's founder, and they married quickly. Hannah gave up her ballet career to support her growing family and their rural lifestyle in Utah, where they run Ballerina Farm, a business selling various products from cookware to farm produce. Despite the controversy, the couple continues sharing their life with millions of followers on social media. South China Morning Post Disney CEO Bob Iger and his multifaceted wife, Willow Bay, are eyeing a $50 million stake in the Los Angeles women's football team, Angel City FC, which would make it the most valuable women's sports club globally. Willow Bay, a former Estee Lauder model, is also an accomplished TV journalist, editor, author, and dean at USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. Married to Iger since 1995, the couple has two children together and Iger has two daughters from his first marriage. Bay played a significant role in dissuading Iger from running for president, urging him to return to Disney instead. Their potential acquisition of Angel City FC aligns with their history of high-profile investments and involvement in various industries. South China Morning Post The Mission, 1986 directed by Roland Joff and starring Robert De Niro and Jeremy Irons, is a film about 18th-century missionaries in South America amidst colonial suppression. It won the Palme d'Or at Cannes and is hailed as one of the greatest films about religion. Matthew Gregory, founder of Faust International Youth Theatre, recalls the profound impact it had on him when he saw it at age 13. The film's grandeur and Ennio Morricone's music left a lasting impression, inspiring Gregory's passion for theater and travel. His encounter with the film led him to visit the Iguazu Falls in Brazil years later, a location featured in the movie, solidifying its influence on his life and career. New York Times The athletes had lost their time in Paris was over. And they were, in this moment of defeat by a team from a political rival, not even allowed the comfort of their homeland's name and flag. To be an Olympian from Taiwan is to not exist, at least not officially. To placate China, the island competes at the games under the awkward designation of Chinese Taipei. The intrusion of politics into sports forces the island's athletes to engage in the kind of rhetorical gymnastics that might trip up a champion tumbler, and which bring a particular sting when you are a table tennis player who has just been beaten by Team China. I'm only fighting for myself, through my own hard work, said Taiwan's Chen Suyu, substituting self for state on the Olympic stage. Her teammate Qian Tung Chuan sidestepped the political discussion entirely, refraining from comment on Taiwan's status at the Olympics. I cannot answer that question, she said. 
may I go? There is no arena more international than the Olympics. The United Nations General Assembly, that other grand global endeavor, excludes the territories, the itty-bitty islands and the not-quite nations that get to go to the games. Puerto Rico, Palestine, Chinese Taipei, they all marched in the Olympic Parade of Nations, as did a refugee team whose 37 members were forcibly displaced from some of the very countries that competed alongside them in Paris. But to accommodate such a diversity, North Korea and South Korea, Israel and Palestine, Armenia and Azerbaijan, China and Taiwan, the Olympic masterminds mandate that athletes should refrain from taking political stands. They imbue in a single sporting moment, the flight of a woman propelled by a springy pole or the revolution of a wheel in a velodrome, an inspirational expression of international unity. They romanticize an Olympic truce in which competitors lay down their weapons for the duration of the world's greatest athletic contest. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's retirement fund watchdog has warned a logistics company's subsidiary to pay 1.6 million Hong Kong dollars, 205,179 U.S. dollars, in pension contributions for 400 employees or face legal action. The warning to high-speed human resources on Saturday was issued as the Labor Department confirmed that it had received complaints from some workers at the firm about pay arrears. A former staff member earlier told the media that the company, owned by high-speed supply chain, had not paid employees' salaries for two months. The authority has requested the company to pay the arrears immediately, the mandatory Provident Fund Schemes Authority said. Otherwise, the authority will pursue civil claims in court to recover the outstanding contributions and surcharges for the affected employees. High-speed supply chain was founded in 2011 and its website says it has more than 2,000 employees with a storage capacity of more than 278,709 square meters, 3 million square feet. The statutory body set up to supervise the city's compulsory retirement scheme said high-speed human resources had still to pay pension contributions and surcharges to cover May and June for 400 employees. The authority added it had logged nine employee complaints since May. Employers are also required by law to pay staff within seven days of the expiry of the wage period. Those who fail to fulfill their obligations face a fine of up to 350,000 Hong Kong dollars and three years in jail. We are actively following up on the incident and have reminded employers to comply with the employment ordinance and pay wages to their employees, a Labor Department spokeswoman said. She added staff who experienced payment delays should file complaints with the department and the government would offer help and inspect their workplaces. South China Morning Post A Hong Kong bus driver has been arrested over dangerous driving after his vehicle allegedly struck and killed a pedestrian in the Northern New Territories. Police said on Saturday a double-decker city bus vehicle hit a 41-year-old woman at 7.57 p.m. at Tin Kwai Road in Tin Shui Wai. The woman suffered head injuries and was certified dead at the scene. The bus was operating Route 967X and heading to Tin Shui Wai from Causeway Bay. City bus said the driver set off at a normal speed when the traffic signal turned green and the pedestrian attempted to cross the road in front of the vehicle. Our staff took immediate action to stop the bus in what was a very challenging situation, the spokesman said. The company expressed its condolences to the family of the deceased and said it would work closely with police in their investigation. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. 
To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email. Breaking the news, breaking the day Truth and insight our way Every story, every play Living clear, we convey Sorry.